Okay, hi guys. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sis. Good morning. We're on lesson 126, and it's your turn to read. My turn. Okay, lesson 126 is mm, reality reversal time, guys. Okay, <laughs> here we go. There's another lesson I didn't get for a good decade or so, right? All that I give, all that I give is given to myself. Hmm. All that I give is given to myself. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's unpack this. Yes. Yeah. Today's idea completely alien to the ego and the thinking of the world is crucial to the thought reversal that this course will bring about. If you believed this statement, all that I give is given to myself, there would be no problem in complete forgiveness, certainty of goal and sure direction. You would understand the means by which salvation comes to you and would not hesitate to use it now. For the means is forgiveness, right? Yes. Let us consider what you do believe in place of this idea. It seems to you that other people are apart from you and able to behave in ways which have no bearing on your thoughts nor yours on theirs. There's that private mind, yes. separate body, right? Right. Yeah. Therefore, your attitudes have no effect on them and their appeals for help are not in any way related to your own. Anybody know that one? Not my problem. It's not That's my problem. not my problem. Mm -mm. That's yours. Mm -hmm. Suck it up, love. Yeah. <laughs> you brought it on <laughs> yourself. <laughs> oh, dear. You further think that they can sin. They can sin. We believe people can sin. Mm -hmm. right. You further think that they can sin without affecting your perception of yourself while you can judge their sin. Goody, goody. Mm -hmm. And yet remain apart from condemnation and at peace. Okay. Wow. Gosh. When you forgive a sin, oh, he's got this is a quote marks, right? Uh -huh. When you quote forgive a sin, there is no gain to you directly. Mm, wow. You give charity to one unworthy merely to point out that you are better <laughs> on a higher plane than he whom you forgive. He has not earned your charitable tolerance, which you bestow on one unworthy of the gift because his sins have lowered him beneath a true equality with you. He has no claim on your forgiveness. It holds out a gift to him, but hardly to yourself. Wow, there's a there's the kind of uh, forgiveness that the world practices. That's exactly right. right. Yes. I forgive you. Mm -hmm. um, For what you and, really did. <laughs> I I forgive you, but I'm not going to forget it. Yes. Right? That's, because, that's another common saying. I'll forgive, but I never forget. Exactly. And I forgive you because, I mean, let's face it, I'm a whole lot better than you, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm more spiritual. I'm more benevolent and I'm going to give it to you even though you don't deserve it. Right. So what, what I've done is I've said that what, what you, uh, the sin that you committed is mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. Damn it, it is real. Yeah. And look at me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to forgive this real sin that you, you mm, committed. Yes. Right? Identifying your brother as sin, as the sin that they committed. Of course. Great. Okay. Yeah. Sounds terrific. Mm. Not. Hmm. Okay. Thus, is your forgiveness basically unsound? a charitable whim, benevolent yet undeserved, a gift bestowed at times and at other times withheld. 
that's exactly what we do. We choose. Yeah. This one I'll forgive, but that one I won't, right? Because yeah. of specialness. Oh, of course. <laughs> With our kids, we forgive our kids. That's right. Sometimes we forgive our partner. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the guy at work no. or the girl at work or the woman at work, forget that. Off with their head. Off with their heads. Guillotine. <laughs> right. Okay. Unmerited withholding it is, sorry, un, this is the ego speaking, unmerited withholding it is just, nor is it fair that you should suffer when it is withheld. Mm -hmm. The sin that you forgive is not your own. Wow, we through the ego, we really do this, right? We go, there's a sin in Mary or in Joe or in somebody, right? There's a sin over there, right? Yeah. And it's not mine. I'm right. triggered by it, but it's not mine. I'm offended by it, by their behavior. I'm offended. <laughs> yes. Oh, someone apart from you committed it. Someone apart from you. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. That's and if you then are gracious unto him by giving him what he does not deserve, the gift, the gift is no more yours than was his sin. Mm -hmm. Right? If this be true, forgiveness has no grounds on which to rest dependably and sure. It is an eccentricity in which you sometimes choose to give indulgently an undeserved reprieve. Yet it remains your right to let the sinner not escape the justified repayment for his sin. Think you the Lord of heaven would allow the world's, world's salvation to depend on this? Would, would not his care for you be small indeed if your salvation rested on a whim, you know, on the idea of the ego's brand of forgiveness, which is really uh, condemning others and ourselves to death, right? Yes. Next paragraph. You do not understand forgiveness. I'm going to say this again. You do not understand forgiveness. As you see it, it is but a check upon overt attack without requiring correction in your mind. It cannot give you peace as you perceive it. It is, it is not a means for your release from what you see. It, sorry, it is not a means for your release from what you see in someone other than yourself. Right. It has no power to restore your unity with him to your awareness. It is not what God intended it to be for you. So he's really speaking about the ego's brand of forgiveness. It is not what God intended it to be for you because it doesn't heal you and the person that you mistakenly saw the sin it, in. It right? maintains the separation. Yeah, it maintains the separation. And even in like churches that yeah. mean well, it's still, you know, they say, well, we need to forgive that one. We need to see him as God is seeing him. Right. But what they're not recognizing is that they still have made the so-called sin real. And Jesus says, you cannot forgive what you have made real. Same thing with sickness. If you see a, someone who's sick and you've made it real, but you're trying to pray for them, that doesn't work because you've now made it, you've judged it as real. So forgiveness past, you know, judging something as real doesn't work. We've got to heal it where it's at. He's going to go into this beautifully, but it's in our mind that forgiveness heals. It heals the belief that you and your brother are different or separate. So when I judge a sickness is real or a sin is real, mm -hmm. uh, obviously I'm going to be triggered and I'll have fear about it or whatever, right? right. Okay. I'm actually blocking God's healing. That's right. <laughs> That's it. Our judgment of a false illusion makes that as a, yes, it, it's a total block. And that's why we need to forgive. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And we actually don't really forgive the sickness itself because in truth there is no sickness or sin. What we do is we fess up 
and say, sorry, uh, Holy Spirit, I've been mistaken in believing that this appearance, ego appearance phenomena, right, mm -hmm. uh, is real. Yes. And I want to forgive myself mm -hmm. for it. I yeah. want to forgive this belief. It always comes back to the self. Yes. I forgive myself for having mistakenly believed mm -hmm. whatever it is yeah. I, I am seeing through the body's false five senses. Mm -hmm. And in the recognition that we wanted to make that real so that our mind isn't open to God, so that we do have the block to the awareness that I and the father are one we're you know it's it's the mind that's fixated on what's not true through fear and judgment and and control um, these are all the ways that we block the movement of God or being the just the expression of God that's what all this unforgiveness is yeah just a block sorry for having believed that to block my awareness to what's really happening here yeah beautiful then we can heal yeah that's right then our perception can be healed our mind yeah. can be healed and that's all there is to the problem and what i meant by then we can heal um sorry is that we become um, the expression of god's healing and god's love yes for others who may still believe they are sick or in pain or in lack or yeah. in conflict or whatever it might be right so you're saying we can't give what we haven't first received exactly thank yes. you this for saying it so beautifully that's it we right. have to receive the atonement mm -hmm. thank you thank you I got what paragraph we're up to i don't know i <laughs> you don't know. Uh, i think we're up to seven not seven. having given him yeah okay not having given him the gift he asks of you, you cannot recognize his gifts and think he has not given them to you. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Mm. Yet would he ask you for a gift unless it was for you? Could he be satisfied with empty gestures and evaluate such petty gifts as worthy of his son? Salvation is a better gift than this and true forgiveness as the means by which it is attained must heal the mind that gives. For giving is receiving. Mm -hmm. What remains as unreceived has not been given, but what has been given must have been received. There it is, this yeah. what you just said before, right? Yeah. Right. I must receive first mm -hmm. or I can give. Yeah. That's right. Because if you're not receiving truly, if you're not giving the real gift, you're, you're giving attack. If you think you know what anything is for and you move before you receive. So instead of waiting on your, you know, the Holy Spirit, your right mind, checking in with God, what is this? What and, and truly receiving a real gift and then giving it, because otherwise, if you decide the mythical me or ego decides I know what this is. I know what needs to be done. And you try to give to a brother, you're attacking him. You're compounding the problem. You're giving more fear, right? And all attack is self-attack. You're not only attacking your brother, but because you and your brother are one, you're attacking yourself. So make sure that you get receive a real gift, you know, the, the real message from the one who knows before you extend. And then what you give is given truly. Yeah. Can I give a practical example? I'm going to try and summarize this. That'd be great. And I'm, and, going, to and I'm going to try not to lose the impact of it, right? Yes. Um, I had, I don't know if I've, oh, maybe I've shared this story before, but forgive me if I have, all right? It's, it's pertinent to this. Yeah. Uh, and I've had many, many, many similar instances. Uh, but one that stands out right now <clears throat> is that my, this is a number of years ago, my daughter was very, very ill. Mm -hmm. 
on death's door, literally, and she had anorexia nervosa and bulimia and weighed 78 pounds or 77 pounds, and she's taller than me. And um, at a, the doctor, her doctor, had called me and was crying on the phone. I think you know this, sis, you were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Her doctor was crying on the phone saying to me, you have to do something. You, do you realise your daughter is going to be dead within a week or a month? All right, because her, um, oh, what's it called? The, the test results revealed that, I've forgotten the name of it, but the, um, I can't remember the name. I'm hopeless. I used to be good at this, but I'm losing it all. The ego's laws, right, say that, she, that her major organs are going to uh, have a short time. Yeah. All right. Now, I was alone in my apartment when I received the call. And, of course, the first thing was uh, the panic of the, of the ego, the mythical me, the nook part, the mother, right? Mm -hmm. And the guilt, I don't know if you can associate with this, but the guilt went from, you know, a five to a thousand in that instant. And the ego was just telling me, look, what you've done. What kind of a mother are you? Um, and if she dies, on your head be it. Um, it, it, went, it went ballistic. Yeah. But at some point, I realised, because I, I, um, I understood at that point, that if I was going to entertain these ego attack thoughts, that I was going to kill my daughter quickly, right? Mm -hmm. Because we share the same mind. Right. And I prayed with Jesus at the time and just said, I don't know how to see this. I don't know anything. And I want for my daughter to be healed, her mind to be healed. Mm -hmm. Prioritize the mind healing, yeah? And for the message that I received was that I had to accept the healing. I had to, as quickly as possible, sit down and join with him. Join with, well, for me, it was Jesus, right? And really, really join with Jesus in accepting the atonement. Like, like I'd never accepted the atonement before. That was where it was at. And the experience that I had was that my fear disappeared. And the reason why through accepting the atonement, the re, you know, which is God's will, I had to accept the atonement. And what happened in that, that was that the guilt completely left. I'm not saying it didn't return to taunt me later, but during that huge opening of healing, I accepted the atonement. Yeah. I really, really accepted the atonement in that and knew in that moment that my daughter was healed. Okay? Mm -hmm. Of course, I forgot it later, but that doesn't matter because what when the ego returns later, it's bullshit. It's just the ego returning. But, but what really happened and in that holy instant of accepting the atonement was that I was healed, she was healed too. And so it was a big lesson for me not to doubt that healing. Um, and I think that points to what he's speaking about oh, here, right, sis? Yes, yeah? yes. Okay. He was the one that stopped and received truly and forgave it. True forgiveness. Yes. Yeah. True forgiveness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was my healing. Mm -hmm. I was not helping her by going, oh, you poor darling, and listening to the doctor. And oh, my and, God. And notice that every other mind, if you had gone anywhere in the world and said, this is what's going on, anybody that said they loved you 
maybe who were, is not on this path would have just gone right into it. Oh my God, you know, it's terrible and you've got to do something, right? And yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And so the outcome of that is my daughter did a complete turnaround. Mm -hmm. And she's now the healthy mother of one and is about to give birth in about a week. in the next week and a half, yeah, to a second baby. Right. Yes. So so hey, that was the turning point. And I've got to thank the doctor because yes. she scared the frigging shit out of me like you would. <laughs> yeah. Gee, she was the one that helped to push the ego to the wall up against the wall and slap me out of it go wow there's only one truth the truth is true mm -hmm. and nothing else is true was i going to believe what jesus was saying in the course or was i going to believe what the doctor was telling me right that's the choice every moment and thank you because your decision to not go down that rabbit hole not only saved your daughter but i mean there's so much more light on the weight of truth now that flooded in with you're just holding the line and then you know your daughter's turnaround is the proof of of that making the choice for god for only what's real so thank you thank you mm -hmm. maybe we should finish the lesson huh okay <laughs> okay <laughs> um today we try to understand the truth that giver and receiver are the same you will need so can sorry can we relate that to me and my daughter in that instant yeah yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. you will need help to make this meaningful because it is so alien to the thoughts to which you're accustomed but the help you need is there give him your faith today and ask him that he share your practicing in truth today and if you only catch a tiny glimpse of the release that lies in this in the idea we practice for today, this is a day of glory for the world. So good. Right? That's yeah. how, yeah. how widespread the holographic nature of this healing is, quantum nature of right. the healing is, right? Give 15 minutes twice today to the attempt to understand today, today's idea. It is the thought by which forgiveness takes its proper place in your priorities. It is a thought that will release your mind from every bar to what forgiveness means and let you realize its worth to you. Mm. In silence, close your eyes upon the world that does not understand forgiveness and seek sanctuary in the quiet space place where thoughts are changed and false beliefs laid by repeat today's idea and ask for help in understanding what it really means be willing to be taught be glad to hear the voice of truth and healing speak to you and you will understand the words he speaks and recognize he speaks your words to you there he goes again yes and recognize he speaks your words to you because as we come into alignment as the will of god it is our holy self the christ within yes his words god's words and his words because we are one with him right that's right that's accepting the atonement that we are one with him and that his the christ's words are our words Christ is one with God. God's word is our word. It's the collapsing of the, the trio in, back into the one in which it is. Just one. Yeah. So, and that's why all, all when we give, we're only ever giving to ourself. Mm. Yeah. Next, as often as you can, Remind yourself you have a goal today, an aim which makes this day of special value to yourself and all your brothers. Do not let your mind forget this goal for long, but tell yourself this. 
all that I give is given to myself. The help I need to learn that this is true is with me now and I will trust in him. And then spend a quiet moment opening your mind to his correction and his love. And what you hear of him, you will believe for what he gives will be received by you. Wow, beautiful. All that I give is given to myself. Mm. Thank you. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And I think this is a good place to, uh, to um, share something, which is it should be starting to happen now. You know how we... Hang on a minute, sis. You know how we compartmentalize our life into some, a giant pizza? Yes. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yes. A yes. pie. Yeah. Right. And so we, you know, we have our we have our significant relationships with our partners, with our kids, mm -hmm. uh, with our parents, if they're still here. Um, we have work. friends, work, colleagues, etc. Et okay, bank account bills mm -hmm. and we you know we keep we when we begin the course we keep them all separate yeah and when we look at this pie we have one slice and it's called um it's called a course in miracles spirituality <laughs> spirituality whatever it might be yeah yeah okay and we carefully keep that separate yeah. from everything else my husband my wife, she doesn't care for the course. Mm -hmm. Not interested. My kids, well, mm. not at all. Right. Okay. Or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And and then and so we go, okay, I need to do this and I need to um I'll just keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. I'll just keep running my life as it is. Mm -hmm. And then I will continue to try to perfect the lessons mm -hmm. or the text or the manual for teachers in the course. And mm -hmm. I'll just keep on going thinking that all the other segments of our pie are not going to be affected <laughs> by us doing this this one segment, right? And mythical me is constantly changing the way it talks, the way it presents itself, maybe even the way it dresses, depending on which part of the pie it's running through, right? Right, yeah, yeah. It speaks to person A differently than person B, right? Yeah. Yes, we don't show up at church and then at work or at the club with our girlfriends uh, the same way. <laughs> no, 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 no. So we effectively become different identities yes. for different purposes. Uh, and those different purposes are specialness, right? Right. Yeah. And so therefore we, we don't realize it at the time, but we enter these relationships with different people differently, mm -hmm. become a different person for mutual use mm -hmm. special yeah. relationships uh relationships of mutual right. use through the ego right but what we do as we advance in our in our trust is we eventually if we're really doing this properly we eventually realize oh holy spirit's asking me to end my compartmentalizing <laughs> to take the compartments out so mm -hmm. that the pie becomes one unified whole. Right. Right? Yes. And how that's done is through forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, what we tend to do is um, we, we tend to think that forgiveness is part time. Mm -hmm. But as we really get into the course, mm -hmm. we realize that it's a full-time job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes when we wake up in the morning. It becomes our number one priority. When before we go to sleep at night, it becomes our. It is our number one priority before we go to sleep, and we realize that forgiveness has to be applied to every compartment of our life, including, <laughs> including, for ourselves, mm -hmm. right? All the self judgment and all of that. I just wanted to say that because I think that's very very important to yeah to share 
at this point. Our, our triggers and our specialness and all of that and our idols are ways in which we keep ourselves separate and different and, and compartmentalized, right? Yes, so forgiveness is true forgiveness. The old means of forgiveness is I'm better and, and different than you and I'm still forgiving you for that real sin that you've committed. Um, but when we start practicing true forgiveness, we're just recognizing that there's just one of us here and how I'm seeing and treating somebody else is how I'm treating and seeing myself. And I can't do to another without doing the same thing to myself. So there goes the pizza slice, you know, the, the fragmentation. And it's coming back to just seeing your brother as yourself and accepting atonement, which was that beautiful prayer. What was it? Two lessons ago. Let me remember I am one with God at one with all my brothers and myself, capital S, in everlasting holiness and peace. So it's the, the desire to extend that holiness and peace to all of creation. Nothing's left outside. There's no compartments. Nothing's different. It's just God is God and God's creation. And we are that. Thanks, sis. And nothing else. And nothing else. Nothing but. Beautiful. Thank you. All that I give is given to myself. So give liberally. Give yeah. generously. Give lovingly. Yeah. Yes. Don't, don't, don't condemn anybody. Don't judge anybody because what you give, you give to yourself. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Yeah. We'll see you next time, you guys. Great lesson. Yeah. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. So helpful. Bye, everybody.